Hey everybody, welcome to I Like to Make Stuff. I wanted to finally give you a shop tour. A lot of people have been asking for it since we moved into this house about two and a half years ago. I've never done it because it kind of feels like showing off and that's not my intention, but since people are asking, I figured it was finally time to show you through the whole place. To show some projects as well as some of the tools and things that we have around the space. You may recognize this ping pong table. This is from a video we did with Evan and Caitlin a couple of years ago. We still play ping pong on this and it still works great. But let me show you the podcasting studio. This is the area where we record uh, a lot of talking points and the No Instructions podcast. We do that right here at this table. And we actually built this table in a project video just a couple of weeks ago, so you may recognize that. In this room, you can also see the old arcade machine. I built that like, I don't know, three or four years ago. It's been a long time now. We don't play it as often as we should, but it's right there. We've also got a bunch of Lego sets and models in this cabinet just to kind of show off. And these are all things that we've made on the No Instructions podcast. It's a lot of fun. We build stuff and then we talk about life and parenting and whatever. So this room is really about recording the podcast, but also about music. I've got some of my personal music gear down here. I don't play as often as I would like to, but uh, I try to keep it set up down here. You may recognize this guitar because we did a video about refinishing this uh, last year, I think, and it still looks great, plays great. I've got an old Rhodes piano. This is from the mid 70s. Uh, this is one of my favorite instruments. I love this thing. This was a project that we did a couple of years ago now. Uh, it was an escape room puzzle, and if you've not seen that video, go check that one out. Let's see, I've got some effects pedals down there and a couple of amps that I use for the different different instruments. That's really what this room's for. There's not a whole lot out here. So let's head to the office. Hey, Bob. Hey, Tavin. You got a second? Um, well, kind of, some... we're shooting. Oh, you're shooting. Yeah. Well, I won't take up? long. I just, I got a couple things um, I was going to bring you by. I, I'm going to stay, but just a minute. I just have been working on something. Uh, what you got uh, there? Well, man? I know how you don't like me coming up without my own material. so. <laughs> Meemaw has got a new pet. It's just a squirrel. It's been coming around, and she wanted me to build a kennel for it. And That's a lot of chain for a squirrel. It, I don't know where to start. I just thought maybe somehow it could be in here. And I, I wanted to do it for her, you know, for her birthday coming up, and also because she, uh, since that bobcat, she ain't had a pet. She didn't think she could love a pet again, and, uh, you know, it's a big deal for oh, her. Okay. So. Um, this is my buddy Tavin Dillard. Um, Hi, y'all guys. He's, he's on YouTube as well. I'm on the YouTubes. Um, we're shooting a shop tour. Oh, okay. So if you want to hang out, maybe we can. Yeah, work yeah, on yeah. In a little while. I'll so be good. Let's uh, let's head on to the office. This is the office. Uh, this is where the three of us work. Uh, Forby is remote, so Anthony has a desk right here. Mine's over there, and then Josh. Uh, Tavin, you remember Josh? What's up, John? Good to see you again, buddy. Uh, and then over here we have an electronic station. You've seen a video about building this, as well as this box up here that holds the filament. And that's for all the 3D printers that we have down here. Now, you've seen most of these printers. Nothing is new over here. Uh, we still use these all the time. And then you may recognize Dan, the Shore Trooper. He's hanging out here and a couple of the weapons that we built um, hey. over the years. And, and then R2-D2, which a lot of you have been watching the construction of him. What's up? Bob, if you put this weed eater wire on the bottom of that thing and send him through the lawn, could he like cut the lawn? Imagine that, boy. Your neighbors see R2-D2 across the lawn, boy, across that backfield, just going like this away, like that away, and just cutting that lawn. I would do this one yeah. with that one. End of the day, boy, you had that thing up and running. I actually really like that idea. Thanks, Evan. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's head to the shop. Out here in the little tiny hallway, we've got just some storage, a bunch of snacks. We drink a lot of coffee here, so we've got that. Some other projects, some older stuff. Uh, this is our gear shelf where we have all the different camera gear, all the batteries are hooked up and you know all the stuff we use to actually shoot the videos. Over here are some uh, resin printers. We've got some new stuff that we're trying out and we keep all those in one place because they are a little bit messy. And then over on this side we've got a whole bunch of part storage. There's you know LEDs and power supplies and all of that stuff we kind of keep down here. S uh, stuff that we sell on the website, books and pencils and all that are up here. And then you may recognize some older projects. Uh, these are all things I've done in the past. Uh, the katana and the lightsaber and yeah. So that's it, let's go to the shop. This is the area that you're probably the most familiar with. This is the woodworking side of the shop. Um, and this is all stuff you've seen before, but I'll run through it anyway. These work tables were one of the first project videos we did in this shop and they are still working out great. 
Uh, we've also got just some like old cabinets, a big tape dispenser, the leather working station. You may remember that one from not too long ago. This thing is great and fantastic and I actually would like to make a few more of those. And then there's the big cart. This thing was an awesome project to make and we get a ton of use out of it. It holds all the clamps on the back side. I just put this stuff here? Uh, yeah, table? that's fine. Yeah. Okay but I gotta finish giving the, the tour. Oh yeah, right I'll now. come with. Oh, okay. Like I was mentioning, the cart is really, really useful. The sandpaper dispenser gets a lot of use. I actually don't use the cutter that often, uh, but it is really nice to have all this stuff organized here. And uh, we have a bunch of other tools on the front. The front of this hasn't changed a whole lot since the, uh, the video that we did for and it. This is just glue? Yeah, it's just wood glue. Just wood glue. Yeah, we've got a bunch of different glues up here. Kind of keep all the different adhesives in one place. You gotta keep it upside down, don't you? Uh, yeah, we try to. Cause, you know, uh, we do that with the ketchup. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It gets to the end. Mima will not waste an ounce of ketchup. That's her favorite. She puts it on eggs, which I don't get. She puts it obviously on hot dogs, hamburgers. Yeah. Uh, sometimes she'll even put it. Well, she puts it on french fries. The thing I don't get is she puts it on nacho cheese. Sometimes she'll substitute it. I mean, nachos, you know, she, instead of cheese, ketchup nachos is what she calls them. That's, That's a true story. Yeah, well, I believe it. It's like lies. your own kind of like woodworking condiment station over here. <laughs> yeah, it is Wouldn't you like think? That. So we have all the cements and everything. Uh, all the adhesives are up there. Uh, back here is all of the sanders. We have a bunch of different types of sanders. This area is always kind of a mess because a bunch of stuff lands here, but also they're sanders, so they cause a big mess. Have you built a squirrel kennel before? Uh, no, I don't, most people don't really keep squirrels, Yeah, you know, as pets. Mima wants to make bonnets for this one. Oh. Yeah, which I'm not asking you to do, but if we can get just like a little thing for him to hang out in at night, she can put him away, I think she'll be pretty happy. Okay, well, um, we, we, yeah, we can get to it. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. All right. So we have a bunch of sanders over here, and then uh, this is a big one that we actually don't show on camera a whole lot. Uh, it's a drum sander. And I, the reason I don't show it is because it's kind of an expensive tool, but when we're making videos every single week, this makes certain jobs a whole lot faster. And so, like I said, we don't show it off very often, but it actually does get a lot of use kind of off camera just to move things like along. Like $100? Uh, it's a little more than that. Okay. Yeah. That is expensive. But it plays the drums too, you said. Well, uh, well it's a drum sander. It has a drum in it. That's that, cool. Yeah. I yeah. mean, anything that can do two jobs at once, I'm all about. I mean, you can play the drums and make me a squirrel kennel. But it's worth two hundred dollars, whatever you pay for it. Yeah, it's a little more than. That's the way I look at it. A little more than two hundred. Um, and then over here we have the miter station. This has been a really, really big, important part of the shop since we made it. Oh yeah. Uh, I bet it is. And a, a lot of people have really enjoyed uh, making their own. We have plans available. Can for this. you make it? Uh, I miter. <laughs> you see what I did there, Bob? <laughs> the miter station. Oh. Uh, yeah, so it's the miter station, um, but a lot of people have made this and sent pictures of it, and that's really, really cool. We do have plans available for almost all this stuff. The saw uh, is mightier than the sword. The, uh, it's true. So let's, you know. let's go around here. You know my brother's a woodworker. Brent is? Yeah, he would work, but he don't. <laughs> There's uh, a few other woodworking tools over here that we actually don't use a whole lot, but when we need them, they've been really, really handy for us. So we have a joiner here. I've got a planer that I kind of keep tucked down mm. under here. It's on a real rolling cart with some casters because this thing is pretty much in the way. It's too heavy to lift onto a table uh, often. So we just keep it down here. We can roll it out when we want to use it and then roll it back. That's been pretty handy. Um, that this, makes big wood smaller? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's kind of okay. what most of these things do. That's pretty awesome. And then uh, over here we have the lathe, which also doesn't get a whole lot of use, but uh, keep it around. It's nice. It's on caster, so it's nice to be able to roll it out and use it when we want. Um, there's a bunch of storage. Again, kind of disorganized over here. Things that don't really have a home end up on these tables. What'd you find? I found a mask. Found like a fencing mask. Uh, kind of. Yeah. That's, that's so stuff doesn't hit you in the face when you're on the lathe. Well, I'll tell you, when we do like the Trailer Park Olympics, this is a good one for the hubcap hurl. Oh. Because it gets pretty, I mean, they ain't sharp, they round. I mean, let's be honest, the hubcap's round, but it can still hurt you get hit in the teeth with some uh, yeah. metal. Yeah, I would think so. And that seems like a really bad idea. Long story know. short, do you have any extras? Um, no. Okay. No, but we can maybe find something to protect your, your yeah. teeth. That may be something good. I'd, I'd like that because... Uh, it's just around the corner. Or you, maybe you just don't do it. First things first, Mamaw needs a squirrel kennel. Yeah, we got we still got a little bit to do, but uh, okay. I'll, I'll help you out. Okay, well follow us over here, please, because there's another thing here Bob has that makes things. Do you, do you know what this is, uh, by the way? Uh, yeah. What is it? That's a saw. Do you know what kind of saw? Yeah, it's a saw for cutting things. 
Yeah, he's not you wrong. Cut, you can cut, like, like if you need a new set of keys or something? Uh, no, you couldn't cut keys on it. This is more, uh, this is a bandsaw. So this is a small bandsaw. Okay. Um, we have a, a very musical one. shop. You got a drum <laughs> sander and a bandsaw. Well, we can make a real album out of here. Well, it's called that because the, the blade is a band. It's a, it's a loop blade that moves around in a circle mm -hmm. on some wheels up they there. They could have come up with a better name because <laughs> band already stole that name and they're trying to take it. True. I don't know. So we have the small one, and it has a thin blade on it. I keep a thin blade for small cuts. Uh, you know, you can make curvier cuts with a thinner blade. And then over here on the big one, uh, we have oh. a three-quarter inch blade for this. And this is good for cutting really thick material or resawing something that's really tall or wide down to a Look at the piece. teeth on that. Yeah, it's uh, pretty dangerous. And this is a brand new blade, so they're pretty sharp. That's like the teeth of a beaver. It could cut through a tree. <laughs> uh, we call this the beaver saw. Well, beaver teeth, I don't think, are sharp. They're kind of flat. Well, I agree to disagree, Bob. Okay. <clears throat> um, so over here we have this big container, which you may have seen in a previous video. I got this on Amazon, and it's just a big, empty container, and we want to eventually move all the hardware that we use for all the projects here so that it's easier to, um, to, here. to, to get to, and we can Down you know, here. organize it a little this bit. This looks better. like an old post office. Uh, yeah, kind of. Like they dropped the a county mm. mail in here. And then you come and get it. Maybe y'all guys could do that for everybody in the office. Anthony's box, John's box, Bob's box. It's Josh. Josh's box, yeah. yep. So Anthony, Bob, Jason, all y'all guys could be right here and pick up your mail every day. Yeah. I like that. That's, yep, yeah, that's a thing we could do. Um, carrot think, sticks. This is where we keep our carrot sticks. Actually, if you remember the axe throwing uh, project that we did for axe throwing for kids. It's a healthy snack. We made a whole bunch of these and we kept them around for a really long time and we just don't have a place to put them. So <laughs> they've ended up in the trash can. Um, this is an extra beehive because uh, the beehives that are built before, we have some extra boxes for. And then there's a couple of extra tables over here that honestly are just kind of left over. They were in use in different places. And some of them are going to go out to the farm. Some of them are going to stay here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. This one was actually an old project a long time ago in my old house. So let's move over. Let me show you the CNC. This could be a squirrel kennel. I mean, with a little door in the front, I think. Uh, maybe. Well, are I mean, these breathing holes out top? No, these are uh, frames. These are what the... Oh. This is a beehive, so the bees can Yeah, create. you can't... That ain't gonna work. I thought these just little slats on top, but yeah. Yeah. Boy, these bees ain't making any honey in here, are they? Uh, no, well, there's not bees in it now, but when you put it outside, you'll what, get bees. What are we waiting on? Um, seasons. Okay. Yeah, so... Okay. So bees only come out when they feel like it. Uh, kind of. So let's talk about CNC. Uh, this is a, a big 5x5 five five CNC from Avid CNC. We use it for you know, quite a bit of stuff, but we try not to lean on it too heavily because it is a big machine. It's something that not a lot of people have access to. So we try to use it when it makes sense, but not overuse it um, like most of the digital tools. So this thing is really... You're not thinking, Bob, if on, the, on the squirrel kennel, if we put a little lock on it, so not not because we mad at him, but because we don't want him to get in, you know, like a bag of corn nuts or something while Mima's asleep. Uh, yeah. Could we put like a door on the front and then she could lock it at night and say, sleep tight, little squirrel, kind of thing like that? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. I think uh, it'd be a good idea. We'll get to that in a little while. So the this CNC um, can cut through a whole lot of stuff. It's It's a very, very powerful machine. In fact, it's a little bit like scary once it starts moving on its own. Uh, this thing can move you out of the way. If Bob, you ever seen them Ginsu knives, them, them uh, you know, infomercials? Yeah. They cut through anything. Well, uh, well, yeah, but I mean, that's like powered by a person. This is powered by a bunch of big, powerful motors. So these are and... stronger than the Ginsu knife, you're saying? Yeah, that's I think a, so. That's a heavy selling point. Yeah, Did you well, make this one? Uh, no, I got this from a company. Oh, boy, they're doing a good job then. It, sh it cuts through a shoe? I, it probably would cut through Ginsu a shoe. Ginsu knife cuts through the sole of a shoe. Uh, yeah, I mean they're different tools. You do. I don't know why things. you would cut through the sole of the shoe unless it's stuck on your foot and you gotta get out for some reason. But that's true. But I don't think do you that. would use this for. Well, I don't know. That's your machine. I'm just telling you, if it's stronger than a Ginsu knife, you're onto something. All right, let's talk about the table saw. I forgot to mention that while we were looking at the woodworking tools. Now this is a saw stop. This is a machine that I am really, really happy with. I bought this many years ago, um, and. Slide those out of the way. Oh, here, let me move these. So the cool thing about the saw stop is it has technology in it that will react if you touch the blade while it's moving. Um, I'm just gonna lay this out here, Bob. 
I had kind of an idea, and then you can kind of bring it home. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah like yeah. you'll bring it home. We'll, um, we'll, yeah, we'll get to it. You mean leave it? Yeah, just leave it there. I'll we'll just leave we'll it. get to it in a minute. Um, so anyway, this this blade will, if it touches, if you touch the blade, it detects the human flesh, and it will pull the blade down. So a lot of people will do a test where they'll take a hot dog, Ooh. and they'll run. I it. like hot dogs. Yeah. Um, so they'll run a hot dog into the blade, and it will trigger the break and make the blade drop down and just nick the hot it's dog. It's like a it's like a robot. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's got electronics in it, and it can detect when there's flesh or. Do you have a hot dog? Um, we could try it. I do, but it's kind of expensive to replace the blade and the brake if that happens. A hot so, dog will break it? Uh, yeah. Now, if you got a saw that a hot dog will break, I don't know if it's one you want in your shop. That actually doesn't have anything to do with hot dogs. That's just an example. Okay. Yeah. Well, now I'm hungry. Let's go to the storage and metalworking section. You may have seen this this lumber storage rack being built a long time ago. It's been around for a long time. It's moved a couple of times. And we can fit a lot of stuff in here. Um, we've got a, a bunch of rough lumber on top. We've got a bunch of sheets of plywood. We got one of these things, but it's a little smaller. But after you cook bacon or eggs on the frying pan, it just... Oh, yeah. Is that what this does? Uh, no, that's for like putting on body compound like Bondo or something if you okay. in a car. What I'm thinking is if you make hot dogs over there on that saw, on the hot dog saw, this thing will clean this up. You basically have a kitchen down here, Bob. Um, with the condiment station over there, you turn that glue <laughs> bottle upside down, fill it with ketchup and mustard and relish. Whoo, buddy, I'd never leave this place. What's this here? Uh, <clears throat> well, it's kind of like a toaster oven. but uh, It kind of is like a toaster oven. It's Yeah, uh, we use it for powder coating, so you wouldn't want to put food in it. You know what? On my French toast, sometimes I like that uh, powder. What's it called? The powdered sugar. Powdered sugar. Yeah. But uh, sometimes I like the syrup, but not at the same time. It's one or the other. So if you put them, you're saying if you put the powdered sugar on this thing in this one and it heats it up, it's going to be ready to go. You got a breakfast. Uh, I mean, yeah, but like I said, you wouldn't want to use that for food because you use it for powder coating and other things, plastics. and. I don't know why you have a toaster oven if you're going to make food in it, Bob. Yeah. All right, so um, back here in this corner, we have a bunch of storage. We keep all of our epoxies, um, wood glues, extra paints. Toilet paper. Uh, yeah, we keep paper towels because the shops can be kind of messy. So well, yeah, when you have lunch and you got a hot dog and some powdered sugar on some French toast, you got to wipe your mouth. Was this a popcorn machine? Uh, no, that's like a, a movie theater popcorn machine. Um, it does kind of look like that. No, that's actually a vacuum former. So you can heat up a piece of plastic and it will vacuum the plastic around a shape so you can make a copy of a shape with plastic. I don't know when you'd ever need to do that. Uh, imagine you wanted to make a mask of yourself um, or a mask of somebody else. You could take a sheet of plastic and melt it and vacuum form it around and then you get a copy of that thing and then you could cut that out and use it as a mask. Do you have a mask of yourself? Um, no. Why? I don't like ghosts, buddy. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with ghosts. Anyway, all right, so um, this is the Ooh. way. Yeah, we got to finish up the, the I don't thing. like it. That was me. Uh, well, I knew it. That wasn't it. a ghost. I know it wasn't a ghost, but. I don't want to scare you because ghosts scare me. I, no thank you. Um, so this is the Wazer. This is the uh, water jet, and it's a desktop water jet. So a, a lot of times people think of water jets being really big industrial machines. This one, it fits on a desktop and just cuts with water and a, abrasive. It's so I do think of water jets being bigger than this. When I was a kid, we went on vacation, Gatlinburg. We were in a motel, and it had like a spa, like a hot tub with them water jets. But the jets were broke. The spa was cold. Look, somebody throw the baby Ruth in the, in the thing. Uh, Meemaw dry heaved. My association with water jets had not been good. So this is, is uh, actually cuts. This isn't like a jet, like a hot tub type thing. This this cuts through. Cut? So you can cut through a bunch of different uh, no metals, way. glass, stuff like that. So this was a thing that we actually cut on here. And you made a microphone? Um, no, it was a grip for a camera. But yeah, it, this is like quarter inch aluminum. So you can cut really thick stuff really precisely. We've cut glass on it. You can cut titanium and a bunch of other things. So then we move on to some new tools that you may recognize if you've seen the recent Between the Builds. This is my new old bridge port. And um, once we got these in place, I actually got it working, got it wired up, and I wouldn't turn stuff. No. Don't, yeah, this is kind of a dangerous. It's got tool. a wheel on it, don't well, it? Yeah, but it, you just can't just turn things. No. So, no. Sure you can't, I know. Um, so 
I got this up and running. It's powered and everything is spinning. I did a little bit of work on, um, here, here, let, let me, uh, here, just, just stand over there Sorry. for a second. So I got all this working and it's just about ready to put on the vise so I can actually start cutting stuff you on You make it. a dune buggy out of this? Um, you could, I, you could make parts for one. Okay. Probably not the whole thing. How long would it take to build like a dune buggy frame? Because I'm thinking if we get a dune buggy going, Bob, I can put the squirrel kennel on the back of it um, to drive it back to Mimo's trailer, but also yeah. Squirrel gets some wind in his hair, That's and he has true. a little, you know, he, he, it'd be fun for everybody is what I'm we'll, saying. We'll, we'll do one thing at a time. We'll, we'll work on the kennel when we're done. And I think what we would do, if we're going to have a dune buggy, so y'all guys join us soon for a video where Bob makes me a dune buggy, and he builds a frame for a dune buggy ramp out of this thing and some of that wood, and then we have a, a picnic with the hot dogs and uh, French toast and the mustard. It's going to be a hoot. It's called the Dune Bug Party, hosted by Bob, and I like to make stuff. <clears throat> okay, so let me uh, finish talking about the bridge. I'll bring board. the potato chips. The bridge fort is a milling machine. Let's just move on. Um, all right, so this is the uh, South Bend lathe that I actually got at the same time that I got the bridge fort. This uh, is... is uh, it looks like you do have an extra mask. Well, yeah, but I mean, we need them over here, too. But there's three of them. Well, we, Anthony needs one when he's filming, so... But there's four of them. Well, that's a welding mask for welding. Which, you know, if you wanted to make a dune buggy, you would need a welder. You would need to well, weld... Well, we are making a dune buggy. Well... It, yeah, um, let me finish up this. Yep, and I'll I'll show you around the metal Can't shop. Can't wait! Can't okay. wait, Bob. Um, so the uh, what's this thing called? The South Bend South Bend lathe. This is South Bend lathe. Um, it's called a heavy tin, and I got this when I got the bridge port from the same guy. Um, this runs. I got it turning, but I have not done anything on it. Uh, basically, I have to make a part for the tool holder, uh, and I have to use the the south the bridge port to anyway so this is the south bend um and i'm looking forward to working on that in the future so this is the metal working section over here um anytime you're working with metal safety first you're going to need like a, a a face mask because of that and then gloves you ever burned your hand bob uh yeah a few times hurts don't it yeah it does sometimes when i'm cooking bacon or making a hot dog uh i get i get my fingers burnt yeah, well, over here, I mean, we're dealing with a really high uh, amperage and yeah. uh, a lot of electricity, and that it can be pretty different than you yeah. know, bacon. Sure. Um, but so we have some metal tools over here. I have a, a bandsaw. This is a Harbor Freight bandsaw. It's really inexpensive. About as far 20 as, bucks? Um, it's a couple hundred bucks. Whew. But, inexpensive. Um, it ends up saving a whole lot of time, you know, and I always mention that you can use that, but you can also use a cutoff wheel and a grinder and kind of get the same effect. Um, we got a, uh, well, let's don't make a huge mess. Sure. Um, so this is a, a belt grinder that I bought uh, last year, and this thing has been super powerful and useful for uh, grinding. You know who yeah. could use a belt? Mort Dwydell. That guy shows way too much. He used to wear suspenders. Somehow he got, he got away from those, and if he drops a quarter at the burger shed, people leaving early. This is called a belt grinder because uh, the the sanding part, the grinding part, is a belt. Kind of sure. like the bandsaw, like I was mentioning before. Oh, yeah. And it goes on here. Now, was this, was that an accident? <sighs> it's an accident. No, it was just around. I want to make a new handle for it one of these days. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, um, I don't know if you knew that. You just had a pun there for an accident. Oh, yeah. There we go. I just, uh, I didn't think about that. The only thing I got on my mind right now is a squirrel kennel. Yeah, um, we're almost done, almost done. So sure. So this is the old drill press that I actually used to have in the uh, woodworking section, and we moved over to here because I got the taller one, same model, it's just taller. So let's move over to the welders. Let me show you this side of the shop. We ended up moving um, all of this stuff onto this side because there's a concrete wall over here, and um, with this, with the sparks that bounce around from welders, I didn't here. Uh, let me show. Let me. Yeah. Now you want these, these you, go with this. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, These go with this. So if you're listening at home and you want to make sure that you don't burn your hands and that you're safe on the on the welding iron here. Is that what it's called? A welder, yeah. The welder here. Wear these big old yellow gloves that, that kind of head up your forearms. Yeah, keep, I mean, keep you safe. there's a lot of sparks, and they, they keep the sparks from sparks. you know burning. It only takes skin. a spark. You know what they say, Bob. 
Uh, yeah, so there's a, a MIG welder and a TIG welder. Honestly, I've not really used the TIG welder yet. I need to learn how to use it, um, so I always kind of default beep, to the beep, MIG. Boop, boop, beep, 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 beep. I'm just kidding. I didn't hit no buttons. And you at home don't want to just hit a button or anything like that. You know, 1 4th of July, uh, we tried a couple bottle rockets inside the trailer. You talk that's, about fire. That's a bad idea. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, but once the Roman candle started going, it was a little ugly. Uh, and you had to do that sometimes too. If Mima gets a hold of too many plums and you just got to air it out, it's better than lighting a regular candle. All right. Um, and so, that's happened a couple of times. Because uh, she likes her produce. Yeah. Who right. So we made a, a ventilation system. If you remember a long time ago, we had a Ooh, paint booth. Any good bathroom needs one of these. I tell you, our trailer could use something like this. And now mima has got her own place now, but I tell you, that could really speed up the process of airing it out, you know? Yeah. Um, well, she we got a healthy system for her age, you know, she really does. <laughs> we use it to get the welding fumes out of this section uh, and they're, they're pulled that way through the pipe and then there's a, a paint booth over there that also needs... That's not a bad idea, Bob. Yeah. That's not a bad idea putting that in there like you did. So, um, and then maybe you saw recently we have the uh, scrap metal container that we made out of scrap metal. Uh, that's there, it holds all the grinders, and then this welding table that I bought not too long ago just to have a nice flat welding surface. I think that's pretty much it for the shop tour. Um, you ever get a finger caught in these holes? Uh, no, I don't put my fingers in there. Why are there holes on here? Well, it's so you can put clamps and things down to hold down the pieces you're You like welding. clamps, don't you? I do like clamps, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe too much? Uh, well, no, I mean, you use a lot of them. When yeah, you're but do you stuff. use more than you need? I mean, sometimes, but I mean, it's funny. It. It's funny. Sometimes, oh, okay. yeah, we For just do it as a joke. Like these, you just put them anywhere. Well, I mean, no, I keep those there, and then when I, I use them when I need them. We're doing a, we're do, a rope swing at the river, and uh, Buddy Whitlow got cut, and all we had was a clamp, and we we held that thing together. Oh. To, he didn't want to go to to the uh, emergency room, and if you ask it, if you see him, and you ask to take a look at it, it he'll look pretty good, but you know, it ain't like a. You know, it ain't, it ain't something that you'd put on, on a TV show to, on a how-to. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think that's what they're for. So, I, I uh, do the job. Well, thanks for uh, checking out the shop tour. I hope it showed you what you were looking for. Um, I hope it gave you some ideas for how to organize your shop and things that maybe you want to eventually get in your shop. Uh, if you have any other questions about... If you have any other questions about the shop... Um, it made me hungry, I'll tell you that. If you have any other questions about the shop, then please leave them down well, in the comments and we will do our cheeseburger and some Dr. Pepper right now. Uh, we'll go get some lunch. In, I can't wait. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and we will be happy to answer them. Um, be sure to check out uh, my buddy Tavin on YouTube. Oh, hey, uh, I'm on Sweet Tea Films. Hey, um, and check out Bob's channel soon for the squirrel kennel that he's going to make for me. Right? Um, yeah. I don't know if, yeah. I mean, it's not for me. I'm not a squirrel, but it's for Meemaw's pet. Yeah. You get the idea. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. You're welcome, Bob. Actually, this guy is named Joel Berry, and Tavin is one of his characters. You want to tell him about what all you do? Yeah, so Tavin Dillard is my character that I do on my YouTube channel called Sweet Tea Films. If you go to SweetTeaFilms.com, you can see all the other work I do, other characters and production work and that kind of thing. And it's been a pleasure being here, Bob. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, I've been watching Tavin videos for a really long time. You should definitely check him out. Go hit the subscribe button on his channel. He's hilarious, and there's a ton for you to watch. Thanks for coming out, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. See ya have a water jet in it. It was broke, the water was cold, and there was something floating. <laughs> Let's head to the office. Mr. Q. So, uh, another channel that I have, which I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge with that is for people not to hate Tavin after they watch that That's video. True. Yeah. April Fools! April Fools! <laughs> <laughs>